Welcome to another edition of the I Am Able Foundation's Medicine Makers, where if your destination is a career in medicine, we're going to show you how to get there. I am your host for the evening, Dr. Renee Roberts, board certified family medicine physician and host um, of this show, as well as physician mentor with the I Am Able Foundation. We are excited to welcome our guest for the evening, Corvell Russell. And today we are going to be talking about black men in medicine. So welcome to the show, Corval. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. You're welcome. So remember, you are watching us right now live on Can TV. That's channel 21. Uh, we are also streaming online uh, as we speak live. You can go to www.cantv. Dot org and click on channel 21 to find us. So uh, we're going to tell you a little bit about our foundation. First of all, the I Am Foundation is a nonprofit organization here in the Chicago land area that is committed to raising our next generation of healthcare health care heroes. Uh, we aim to increase underrepresented minority participation in medicine. So if you are in high school, um, college, or a post-baccalaureate student who is interested in pursuing a career in medicine, please check out the I Am Able website by going to www.iamable.org, and that is spelled I A. M B E L dot O R G for more information about how you can join this exciting organization. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and get started with our topic for the evening. Uh, as you know, the I Am Able Foundation has been spending some time uh, for the past few months talking about black men in medicine. Uh, so here in the United States, just a couple of quick facts for you. Uh, we have blacks, uh, African Americans make up about 13% of the population, but we account for less than 3% of medical doctors in this country. And so the I Am Able Foundation is working hard to find solutions to increase the numbers of black men in medicine. And that brings us to our conversation this evening. One way we are doing that is to highlight this important need and share stories um, about uh, black male physicians or those who are studying or pursuing uh, a career in medicine. And that brings me to our lovely guest for the evening, Corvell Russell. Welcome to Medicine Makers, Thank Corvell. Thank you. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, so can you tell, uh, tell our audience just a little bit about yourself? Sure thing. Um, mm -hmm. My name is Corvell Russell. Um, I started off getting an associate's degree uh, at the City Colleges of Chicago. And then I uh, transferred over to Chicago State University where I'm pursuing a pre-med bachelor's degree. Um, one of the reasons that I went over to Chicago State is because there are many research opportunities over there. There are a lot of uh, great professors that you're able to go ahead and work with on uh, more of a personal level. Uh, one of the research opportunities that I've gotten into uh, with Professor McDonough at Chicago State was a coronavirus uh, research uh, where we were researching coronaviruses, and I happened to discover, or we discovered, two new species of coronaviruses and uh, two species of bats that it hadn't been discovered in before in Angola. Uh, another research project that I've been on uh, through Chicago State is uh, they had an internship, uh, a CORS internship, in which I was able to work with the SBDRC over at Northwestern. And, um, and for I was, our audience that doesn't know what that is, can you explain that just a little bit? Oh, SBDRC mm -hmm. is um, what the dermatology department it stands for: skin biology and what is it? Skin biology and disease related center core. Mm. Uh, in particular, I work in the uh, STEM department or, or the STEM sub core of that, which stands for uh, skin tissue and engineering morphology. And uh, what I've been working on there is the improvement of 3D skin models. Wow, okay, so for those of you who don't know, this is actually quite interesting. So Corvell is involved with medical research, yes, okay, um, which is very important uh, in the healthcare field. A lot of uh, students who are pursuing a career in medicine, such as Corvell, will also um, spend some time doing medical research. A lot of medical schools uh, look at that very favorably because uh, you learn a lot during the uh, medical research process. Um, so for someone who is not familiar with working in medical research, 
Um, what is one thing that you would like for them to know uh, about that process? Like, what are some of the benefits of participating in medical research? Oh, sure thing. Uh, one of the huge benefits that I find from participating in medical research is you want to apply a lot of the uh, theoretical knowledge that you're getting in a lot of the classroom. Sometimes when you get it uh, from the books and you're in the classroom, it doesn't necessarily stick the way that you want it to. Mm -hmm. But when you are applying it in a laboratory, you kind of get to learn a lot of those different processes. You understand them a lot better. They stick with you better. And um, it's definitely a um, very tangible skill that you're able to go ahead and get in the laboratories. Excellent, excellent description. Yes, I think um, what's important to realize is that a lot of the things that we as doctors do, um, a lot of our day-to-day -day practices, we actually are doing because of the benefits of doing uh, medical research. Um, why are we giving people certain blood pressure medications as opposed to this one? Or why are we using this to treat uh, diabetes? That usually just doesn't happen, you know, by random chance someone has actually gone ahead of us uh, uh, people such as Corbell and the research that he's uh, doing uh, to be able to find out uh, best practices that actually translate into clinical medicine, what we would do as doctors uh, day to day, uh, seeing patients. So you mentioned um, that right now you're a senior. Congratulations um, you, at Chicago State University. And so uh, you have mentioned to me that you are in the process of getting ready to apply to medical that is school. Correct, yes. yes. Can you share with our audience or maybe some of our prospective uh, students uh, who are interested in applying to medical school what is that what has that process been looking like for you challenging <laughs> but um, yes. it's definitely uh, able to be done um, one of the main things that you want to do is make sure that you focus on your studies um, that's been one of the main things that I've been doing is keeping up with my studies, making sure that I'm able to go ahead and keep up with my classes. Um, I'm still doing research on uh, bo with uh, both of the mentors that I've been working with, the one over at SBDRC, Dr. Perez White, as well as uh, Professor McDonough at Sh uh, Chicago State. And um, I've been making that time, so you really have to prioritize the things that you're doing uh, when you have all of that going on. Um, another thing that you want to do is you want to start looking at those applications so that you're prepared to tackle those uh, before that due date. Um, I'll be applying next summer, so I'm trying to go ahead and make sure that I have that application in mind. I've been uh, working on my personal statement, having those that support me read over it so that they're able to, uh, making sure that they're able to understand that personal statement. So it's a lot that goes into it, but it's, it's definitely able to be done. And can you share with our audience just a little bit about what a personal statement is for those people that may not, uh, not too familiar uh, oh, with that term? Of course. So a personal statement is, uh, how can I go ahead and put it the best way? <laughs> it is a statement that you put together that gives the institution that you're turning it into an idea of who you are. Mm -hmm. So it gives an idea of why you want to be a physician um, the road that you've taken to become a physician or to get to medical school, as well as uh, things that go ahead and uh, relate to your personal experience getting there. Yes, and there's a lot of weight. I remember writing my personal statement, for those of you. It's not just sitting down and throwing some words together. Um, like Corvell mentioned, that literally is your chance to share with your prospective medical schools about why you are going to make a great physician, Absolutely. what makes you a great candidate, highlight, um, you know, your accomplishments, or if you've had some setbacks, because I know I had a few setbacks, and we had to talk about that uh, during our personal statement, and it's okay. It still worked itself out. Uh, I was still able to uh, make my way into medical school. One thing that I wanted uh, to ask you about, because you have a very unique uh, story um, as part of your kind of driving force as to why you wanted, um, why you're pursuing uh, medicine that actually um, involves your father. Um, and for those of you that don't know, Corville actually was not a biology major. Is that correct? You weren't no. a biology major first. You were actually majoring in... I was majoring in business. You were a business major. Yes. Tell us about that. How did you go from business uh, to becoming a biology major? So when I applied to the city colleges, I originally was a business major. Um, in the process of me uh, trying to acquire that business degree, my father suffered from a stroke. Mm -hmm. 
um, and it was a pretty bad one. Um, and the process of him healing, um, I had to kind of leave school to the wayside. So I dropped out of school to more so help my father on that healing process. And then during that healing process, I noticed the physician that my father had advocating for him, and I've noticed the importance of that advocacy. Um, without that advocacy of that physician, my father probably wouldn't have been able to recover and get a sense of normalcy to his life. Uh, when I saw that, that definitely went ahead and showed me that medicine was what I wanted to do afterward. Wow, that's a powerful, powerful story. And, you know, I think it's so good to highlight that because not everyone has, you know, a rosy start or a rosy picture to becoming a doctor. A lot of us don't just wake up one day and say, I want to be a doctor. <laughs> I mean, there's usually a story behind that, some Absolutely. type of um, motivating uh, factor or driving force. And in many cases, it's not always something that's, you know, uh, pleasant. I mean, that had to have been very hard, um, you know, watching your father, you know, have to go through um, a stroke. But that happens for a lot of folks. They Absolutely. have, sometimes that's our first um, introduction to, um, you know, working with physicians. I know a lot of us I'm not sure about you. I know in my family, I'm the first uh, physician, okay? I didn't have anyone to, you know, a basis for which to look at. I was like, all right, <laughs> I want to be a doctor. We're going to figure out how this is uh, going to work out. But for you, you know, you had a touching experience with your father and working with, the, um, working with his doctors and uh, nurses and that type of thing. And that, um, you know, was a beautiful, um, beautiful motivation for you. Uh, and these are actually the type of things uh, that should be, listed in your personal <laughs> statement, believe it or not. These are the type of stories uh, that uh, medical schools uh, actually love to hear, okay, uh, if you've had that. So um, have you run, well, I know you're getting ready to um, apply. Again, it's a long process. Um, have you run into any challenges? Plenty of challenges, <laughs> actually. Um, one of the big challenges that I've had um, being pretty much an untraditional student is um, I had to do a lot of working in the beginning of my college career as opposed to studying. So a lot of my classes I wasn't necessarily able to go ahead and attend full time. So I had to break my classes up, which made the road toward my graduation a much longer uh, process. Um, but I've been able to go ahead and work through that, and I'm finally at that finish line right now where I'm in that senior year, so yes. that's an amazing uh, accomplishment for me. Yes, it is. We're saying congratulations early to him <laughs> uh, on his uh, upcoming graduation, but I think it's good to highlight that, yes, we all deal with setbacks. We all deal with challenges. I certainly had my fair share, <laughs> okay, uh, in medical school. Um, but I think that's what makes you resilient and that's what makes you strong. And those are actually great qualities uh, uh, that a doctor should have. Nobody needs a doctor that's going to get weak in the knees <laughs> and back down from a challenge, okay, when that's your family member that's, uh, you know, potentially maybe fighting for their life uh, in the hospital. Absolutely. Um, well, one thing that is important as well, um, which of Ravel has been doing is he's um, a well-rounded package. It's not just about the book smarts. It's not just about studying, you know, your biology and your chemistry and your physics and organic chemistry, uh, but you've also gotten involved with some um, extracurricular activities as well um, with your involvement with the Chicago State Biological Society. Could you uh, share a little bit about that? Absolutely. So mm -hmm. the Chicago State Biological Society um, really tries to get a majority of the biology students um what it is, is it's a student-led organization which tries to go ahead and tailor toward the biology students there, giving them an idea of different uh, professions or um, graduate schools that they can go to afterward. So one of the things that I've been doing um, as the president of the Biological Society, for instance, is reaching out to the Department of Pharmacy, and go into the informational so that I can try to get that information and bring it back to those members so that they can know that there's a pharmacy program there, what they would have to do to go ahead and apply for that pharmacy program and things of that nature. I've also been trying to go ahead and um, bridge that gap between a lot of uh, Chicago State students and uh, medical mentors so that I can go ahead and get them the mentorship that's required in order for them to um, be successful in trying to get into these medical schools afterward. Yes, and you hit 
the nail on the head. Mentorship is key. We cannot do this all by ourselves. Absolutely. Um, and that is one of the great things uh, about the I Am April Foundation. Again, you're watching uh, Medicine Makers here on Chicago's Can TV Channel 21. I am your host, Dr. Renee Roberts, uh, physician mentor with the I Am April Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization here in Chicago, uh, aiming to raise our next generation of healthcare heroes uh, by providing mentorship to those students, uh, high school, college, and post back who are interested in becoming uh, physicians or pursuing other careers in medicine. And our host uh, this evening is Cordell Russell, who is on his way to graduating um, from college and is getting ready to pursue uh, his career as a physician. Um, so speaking of which, can you tell us what type of doctor um, are you aspiring to be and why? Well, there are a multitude of uh, different uh, areas of specialty that I'm interested in. One of them is radiology. Another one of them is dermatology. In mm -hmm. particular, I've become interested in dermatology more so because of the research mm -hmm. that I've been doing recently. Mm -hmm. um, I've really been having fun in the SBDRC. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the different uh, procedures that we've been doing there have, like, really shine, uh, shine the light on the fact that that's probably where I would want to go after that. Yeah. Wow, dermatology is fantastic. We definitely need more skin <laughs> specialists. Um, what type of procedures? You mentioned you were doing some uh, procedures there with your research. Mm -hmm. Are you able to uh, discuss some of those? Uh, well, more so I've been working on uh, keratinocyte isolations and I've been using the keratinocytes that I've been isolating to build these 3D skin models. Um, in particular, what we've been trying to do is incorporate immune cells into these skin models in order for us to study disorders um, that involve the immune system. So by us doing that, we'd have an in vitro model which would be more controlled so that we're able to kind of study those models and control the environment that they're in. Wow, you sound like you are doing some intense uh, research. I feel like I just went back to medical school. You're hearing about in vitro uh, studies. Um, who have your, we were talking a little bit, obviously, about the importance um, of mentorship. And uh, one of the things that we're trying to do um, with this series, again, is just highlight and showcase that, yes, there are men of color. In this particular case, we're focusing on black men of who are pursuing, um, like you said, medical research, careers in medicine. Why do you think that is important? important. That representation is very important when it comes to medicine. Uh, when you sit there and you think about it, like a lot of the uh, medical books that you look at right now don't necessarily even have the representation when it comes to a lot of disorders when they come around. So most doctors that you're looking at right now may not necessarily even know how certain disorders present on a person of color. By you having that representation, it's our responsibility to go ahead and study those things in people of color so that we're able to see how that presentation is. Yes, you bring up a very uh, good point. Um, I don't, especially even with the textbooks, um, when I was in medical school, I, a lot of times the illustrations, like the drawings that you might see of someone with a rash or the heart or the digestive tract, none of the pictures looked like me. There were no people of color, okay? Um, and so, yeah, that, that definitely can have an effect on you, even as a physician, even as a medical student Absolutely. training. Um, and I think that happens a lot in research um, as well. You know, historically, we've had um, some challenges in this country. Country, uh, with mistrust um, of the healthcare um, system, thinking about you know things back to the Tuskegee, um, even with most recently the coronavirus uh, pandemic and the uh, you know release of the vaccine, and I've witnessed you know patients with a lot of vaccine hesitancy just because of that. Um, but I think it's um, important. Representation, as you mentioned, is important. We need a seat at the table. Absolutely. Um, and this is how it starts. Uh, one, one medical student, one soon-to-be medical student uh, at a time. Um, what are some ways that you think uh, that we could help to increase um, seeing black men in research such as yourself or black men in medicine? Honestly, I feel as though the way to go ahead and do that is to go ahead and increase that representation. Um, one of the things that I didn't get a lot of is you don't see many black men in medicine as a result of that, or you don't really see, well, you do see, but it's like in such a small number as a result of that, you know, I believe that 
you're able to become what you're able to see. Mm. With that lack of you seeing it, it makes it seem like it could be something that's out of reach for you. So mm -hmm. by us going ahead and uh, pushing forward and getting into those positions and letting people know you are able to go ahead and achieve that, I feel as though we can go ahead and bridge that gap and have more of us in medicine. Very well said. You're right. If you can see it, you can achieve it. And I think that's why... Um, the I Enable Foundation is so important. I think that's why mentorship in general is so important. Um, so that you can see that, yes, there are physicians out there. Uh, there are medical students out there that uh, look like you, whether you're you know, African American, whether you're Latino, uh, Latina. Um, we have um, a wide variety um, of students and uh, physician mentor mentors, but for that very reason, so that our students can see that, yes, there is someone out there who's been through the process uh, who looks like them who's you know gone through the struggles knows what that feels like to be the only you know minority on rounds with your team goodness gracious I mean my gosh I've been mistaken for anybody but being a doctor I have a long white coat on and they unfortunately a lot of people still don't associate us with being capable um, of being uh, being a doctor so I agree with you the uh, representation is key um, and let me ask you this uh, what would be probably like your number one in, uh, advice if you're giving a student um, who is looking at you right now saying, oh my gosh, Corbell is doing research. Uh, he's getting ready to apply to medical school. My goodness, um, you know, you have some challenges with your father's health. Like, my gosh, how do you do it? How are you able to hold it together and still go after um, your dreams, even though you've had um, some setbacks? What advice would you offer? My advice is that if this is something that you truly want to do, you can't let anything detour you. It's very important for you to understand that there will be many setbacks. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be something that gets in your way, but it's very important to go ahead and make sure that you constantly keep that forward motion, even if it's a slight one. Because at one point, as I sat there and said, I wasn't able to go ahead and take that full load. It was a class here, a class mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So it makes it seem like it's almost at a snail's pace. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that snail's pace eventually adds up. And like I said, right now I'm at the finish line of getting my bachelor's degree, which I'm very excited about. And I'll be the first person in my family to go to a medical school after I apply. So what seems impossible at first can very much so become possible as long as you go ahead and keep it in mind and keep moving toward it. Very well said. That is so true. And I think, um, you know, that's one thing that is so important. A lot of students give up. Mm -hmm. It gets hard. It gets tough. I got a bad grade on a test. Um, you know, a lot of people, this, this is hard. Let's, let's be real. Absolutely. This is hard work. Um, it's a lot of school. You gotta, you have to like to go to school. Um, you know, sometimes it's a struggle, uh, you know, to even just get to college, which you've already done, which is great. You started out at a community college mm -hmm. and then transferred in. So it's, you know, he's living proof, okay, that obviously it's possible and that it's doable um, and that you're uh, at the finish line. But I think that's key not to get... Um, not to get discouraged, not to just throw in the towel uh, when the times get tough, because my goodness, uh, you're going to have a lot of tough times. <laughs> you know? I'm just going to tell you that right now, <laughs> as you're getting ready, uh, which I know you're aware of that. Uh, but yeah, but uh, there's a lot of tough times, but in the end, it is worth it. Like you said, you'll be the first medical doctor in your family. I am the first medical doctor uh, in my family, and somebody has to be the first. Exactly. Okay, So that is some word uh, for some, one of you out there that is uh, watching this or uh, thinking about should I go for it um, yes I think the answer to that question is a resounding yes you absolutely uh, should go for it um, now did you have uh, any mentors uh, growing up for medicine uh, or just in general well just uh, in general. the mentors that I had growing up were more so my mother and father mm -hmm. um, one of the things that they did was they they definitely encouraged me to go ahead and achieve whatever it was that I felt as though I could mm -hmm. and one of the main things they told me is nothing holds you back but yourself mm -hmm. and I believe that you're able to go ahead and do whatever you want to when I told them that I wanted to be a physician they're like all right well you go ahead and do it <laughs> so 
it was like there wasn't any like talking out of it or anything. It was just they knew that I would be able to do it. Wow. So um, my father, one of the things that he told me is um, if I'm not going to become a physician, then I obviously didn't try as hard as I mm. would as I needed to. Excellent. So um, they definitely always encouraged and inspired me to go ahead and achieve whatever it is that I felt as though I could. That is some excellent advice. And my goodness, our time uh, has, is about to end. So I think that is a fantastic way to end the show. It has been a pleasure, uh, Corvell. Thank you so much. Again, we've been uh, continuing our series tonight on black men in medicine. Uh, you have just watched Corvell Russell, senior at Chicago State University, who is graduating next year. Congratulate him. Getting ready to apply to medical school on his way to become a MD, PhD, so he's going to be doing uh, research uh, as well. Thank you so much for highlighting your story. Thank you. um, again, thank you for watching uh, tonight's edition of Medicine Makers. If you're interested in learning more about the I Am Able Foundation, please head over to our website at www.iamable, and able is spelled A B E L dot O R G. Uh, I believe this is our last uh, show for the season. We'll be back uh, starting in early 2023. Thank you for watching this evening. Good night. <laughs>